Fundamentally, all takeoffs, approaches, and landings, whether to and from a carrier or a training field, are executed in the same manner. The purpose of this film is to teach those fundamentals. Your plane is in the takeoff position. You have advised your instructor by interphone, tail wheel locked, ready for takeoff. Look around and make sure there are no other aircraft that may be landing or taking off. Then after a final visual check with the tower, you are ready to go. You release the brakes and put your heels firmly on the deck. You then advance the throttle smoothly but positively to the sea level stop. Meanwhile, holding the stick slightly back of the neutral position, which keeps the tail down and allows the locked tail wheel to assist in maintaining directional control. Pick an object on the horizon for a reference. And remember that engine torque will tend to pull the nose to the left as takeoff power is applied. Be quick to correct this and any other swerves. As your speed increases, Maintain directional control with your rudders and ease the stick forward. This is the takeoff attitude and is held throughout the takeoff run. As you approach takeoff speed, maintain this takeoff attitude, exerting back pressure on the stick as necessary. And your plane will leave the ground. As soon as you are safely airborne and all obstacles are cleared, Retard your manifold pressure to 30 inches and your propeller pitch to 1950 RPM. As your speed approaches normal climb, 95 knots, assume a normal climbing attitude. Adjusting your trim tabs is necessary and climb straight ahead. At an altitude of approximately 100 feet or when you have cleared the end of the runway, whichever comes first, depress the power push and bring up your wheel. When flaps are used on takeoffs, raise them at 200 feet above the terrain. At 250 feet, start your turn out of the field. When you have 1,000 feet of altitude, switch your gas selector valve from reserve to right tank, always remembering to turn through the left tank position and never through the off position. Here are the varying attitudes of your plane during a correct takeoff. Here is another takeoff run. Notice how the tail stays down and allows the locked tail wheel to help maintain directional control. As the speed increases, the nose lowers to a position between level flight and climbing attitude. Approaching takeoff speed, the angle of attack is increased and the plane leaves the ground. At approximately 100 feet, or beyond the end of the runway, the wheels are raised. Traffic permitting, at 250 feet altitude, the plane begins a climbing turn and the takeoff is complete. Before going into the approach, 
Let's review briefly the standard field entry procedure. You join the 1,000 foot traffic pattern at an angle of less than 45 degrees and a speed of 120 knots. At position one, you switch the gas valve to your best tank and apply at least four strokes to your wobble pump. At position two, retard your throttle until the warning horn sounds, then depress power push and lower wheels. With your wheels locked, apply throttle to regulate your rate of descent. At approximately 800 feet and 95 knots, lower 20 degrees of flaps for a half flap approach. Report landing checkoff list complete. Level off at 500 feet and 90 knots, and with no traffic interfering, cross over at 500 feet and 90 knots. At this point, a beam of the upwind end of the field, you begin your approach. You are at 500 feet, 90 knots, and wing tip distance from the field with 20 degrees of flaps. Check your wheels down and locked and report to your instructor by intercommunication system. Wheels down and locked. Immediately prior to reaching a position, a beam of your intended landing point, retard your throttle to 15 inches and place your prop in full low pitch. At a point, a beam of the intended point of landing, start a turn toward the landing line trimming your plane for a power glide attitude which will produce a speed of 80 knots. Gradually reducing power, plan your approach so as to intersect the landing line with approximately 150 feet of altitude, 75 knots airspeed, and 800 feet of straightaway prior to reaching the desired landing spot in the first third of the runway. Make sure any obstacles at the end of the field are cleared by a safe margin. Then, reduce power further and finally close your throttle just prior to beginning your transition to a three-point attitude for landing. Here is how the maneuver will look to you. You are in straight and level flight on the downwind leg. A beam the upwind end of the field at 500 feet altitude, 90 knots and 1850 RPM, you are at wingtip distance from the field. At this point, you advise your instructor Wheels down and locked. Maintain your wingtip distance from the runway throughout the downwind leg. Just before coming a beam of your intended point of landing, retard your throttle to 15 inches and put your prop in full low pitch. A beam of the landing point, start your turn and trim the plane for a power glide attitude to produce a speed of 80 knots. Gradually reduce throttle so as to intersect your landing line at approximately 150 feet altitude, 75 knots, and 800 feet of straightaway from the point of intended landing. With any obstruction safely cleared, finally close your throttle just prior to starting the transition to landing. Watch this properly executed approach. A beam your intended landing point, start a turn to intersect the landing line with 150 feet of altitude and 800 feet of straightaway. Here are the final stages of the approach, ending with the point at which the throttle is completely closed just prior to beginning the transition to a three-point attitude. This is the final position of your plane in its approach. The turn-in to the landing line is the most important phase of the approach. Done correctly, the plane is in good balanced flight, lined up with the center of the runway at the straightaway point. If the turn is too shallow or too late, you will overshoot your landing line and have to make a sharp right turn to line up with the center of the runway. Correspondingly, 
If your turn is too steep, you will be angling in toward the runway, and a steep left turn will be necessary to line up with the center of the runway. Remember also to take into account the strength of the wind. A strong wind requires a slower rate of throttle reduction and a slightly increased angle of bank to reach your 800 foot straightaway point with an altitude of 150 feet. When making your first approaches, throttle may be advanced to maintain safe flight if necessary. But with practice, you can correct the errors that necessitated such an increase in power. Beginning with this last attitude of the approach, which occurs with the plane at an altitude of about 30 feet, this altitude will vary with different planes and different wind conditions, you are ready to break your glide preparatory to landing. This is done by applying back pressure on the stick so that the nose raises slowly and smoothly and the plane comes to a three-point attitude a foot or two above the ground. Your aim is to maintain this attitude until the airplane lands, keeping it airborne as long as possible. This requires more and more back stick as the plane loses airspeed and settles to the runway. If you have done everything correctly, the stick will be all the way back as your plane contacts the runway in a three-point attitude. Keep it fully back until the plane stops rolling. Keep your heels on the deck until the plane touches down. Your landing is not complete until your plane has stopped. Use rudder and brakes to keep your plane rolling straight. Keep your stick all the way back to help maintain directional control by holding the tail and the locked tail wheel down. And always keep one hand on the throttle. Stay relaxed. Don't tense up. Here are some common errors. If you brake your glide too low, you will hit the wheels first and bounce. If you pull your stick back too rapidly when braking your glide, your plane will balloon or gain altitude. If there is any doubt in your mind, don't try to land. Advance throttle and go around again. Here is a way to help you judge your altitude. Instead of looking at the ground or the nose of your plane, let your vision pick up three points that will act as a guide. For example, the horizon, this building, and the edge of the runway. You will instinctively be able to judge more accurately your distance above the ground through the position of these three points in relation to your line of vision. Keep this landing attitude in your mind. Let your eyes pick up objects and reference points on the ground below, ahead, and around you to establish the position of your plane as this position in relation to those objects. And your landing and landing runout will be as smooth as this one. 